Hey guys, welcome to section 3.1. In this section, we'll talk about points and graphs of lines. Let's get started. So this should hopefully be quite familiar from previous courses. This is the XY coordinate plane. Uh, sometimes it's called the XY plane, sometimes it's called R2. Uh, more often than not, we're just going to call it the XY coordinate plane. So a couple of features, the horizontal line that everything starts from is called the x-axis. So the horizontal axis is always the x-axis. The vertical axis where everything starts or where we start counting is known as the y-axis. And where we start this point where the two axes meet is called the origin, which hopefully makes sense. That's where the entire coordinate plane is essentially originating. And now if you go from the origin to the right on the x-axis, you get positive x values. If you go to the left from the origin on the x-axis, you get negative x values. Similarly, if you go up from the origin, you get positive y values. And if you go down from the origin, you get negative y values. A couple other terms. This perhaps is less frequently used, but we should know where they are or what they are. A quadrant is essentially one fourth of the xy coordinate plane. So this is known as quadrant one. So anything that's, you know, a positive x value and a positive y value, that point will reside or will live in quadrant one. Anything that has a negative x value, but a positive y value will reside or live in quadrant two. Similarly, if you have a negative x value and a negative y value, it'll sit in quadrant three. But if you have a positive x value and a negative y value, it's going to live in quadrant four. So uh, next thing we got to talk about is what an ordered pair is. An ordered pair is simply a collection of two coordinates or two numbers where there's an order to them. Pair meaning that there's two of them, ordered meaning the x coordinate always comes first and the y coordinate always comes second. This is just the standard notation that's been assumed by mathematicians across the world. We always write x first and then the y coordinate second. Now here you'll notice that in the previous graphs, I never had the axes uh, numbered or these hash marks were always here, but I never put numbers on them. The reason why is because I wanted you guys to see or observe that the scale of the graph can be whatever you want it to be as long as you stay uniform. So what you can do is count off these hashes by one. So this will be one, two, three, four, and then on the left hand side, the same distances will be one away as well. The same thing goes with the y axis. If this is one, two, three, four, the same distances down here will be off by one as well. However, we have the freedom to set our scale for the picture. If instead, if our data is huge, and we say, you know, we, we don't want to count off by one, because if we need to graph, say, 20 comma 10, we, we would need a massively long uh, amount of paper, or the page would need to be super long. So what we can do is condense our scale to count off by fives, which is fine, as long as you count off the other side by fives as well. So this goes 5, 10, 15, 20. This also goes negative 5, negative 10, 5, negative 15, and negative 20. So we're counting everything off by 5. So bottom line is, as long as you keep the scale the same all the way through, it doesn't matter what scale you use. But you have to tell me what the scale is. So you have to count off at least one of these, and then one of these, to, for us to be able to say, oh, so if you don't write numbers here, we can assume from the fact that this is 5, 10, 15, 20, that this is negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, and negative 20. So again, you can set whatever scale you want. It doesn't matter to us, but it has to be consistent all the way through. So here's an example. Uh, we labeled, I counted off my, my scale by ones. So the question here is, I want us to go over the coordinates of the point of the ordered pair. And I want us to be able to think about which quadrant they're living in. So let's start with A. A, the x coordinate, in order to get to A, we have to go three units to the right on the x axis. 
and we're not really moving up or down on the y-axis. So the coordinates for point A will be 3 comma 0 in parentheses. 3 comma 0 because again it's 3 units away from the origin on the x-axis and 0 units above or below because it's sitting on the x-axis. Now the points that are on the axes we cannot say that they belong to a certain quadrant because you know quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 could both claim the axes. So instead of having a fight over them, we say that the only points we can assign quadrants to are ones that are not on the axes. So if a point is on a particular axis, so for point A, we would just say it's on, ax on the x-axis. We wouldn't say that it's in some quadrant. Similarly, for B, we go over two units to the right on the x-axis. That means it's a positive 2 as the x-coordinate. And then we have to go up by one unit to get to it on the y-axis. So the coordinates of this point will be 2 comma 1. And hopefully you remember this is quadrant 1, this is quadrant 2, this is quadrant 3, this is quadrant 4. So B happens to be in quadrant 1. Point C, let's look at this one next. In order to get to this point, we need to go negative 2 units or 2 units to the left on the x-axis. So once we're here, we need to go four units up on the y-axis. So the coordinates of this point would be negative two, comma four, because that's how high this point is. Again, just a friendly reminder, the x-coordinate always comes first, the y-coordinate always goes second. For point D, which is down here, we're not really going to the left or right on the x-axis. All we're doing is going down on the y-axis. So the x-coordinate will be 0 because we didn't move to the left or the right of the origin. And then for the y-coordinate, we have to go 4 units down in order to get to this point. So the coordinates or the location of this point would be 0, comma, negative 4. And again, just because it's on an axis, we would say that this is on the y-axis as opposed to saying, hey, it's either in quadrant 3 or 4. We, we can't really decide that battle. For E, we would need to go 1, 2, 3 units to the left, and then we would need to go 1, 2 units down. So the coordinates would be negative 3, comma, negative 2, and it's in quadrant 3. It's quite obvious that it's in quadrant 3. And then lastly, for F, we have to go 2 units to the left on the y, uh, I'm sorry, on the x-axis, but we're not going up or down on the y-axis. So the coordinates will simply be negative 2, comma, 0, because we didn't go up or down on the y-axis. And again, just like A and D, because this point is on an axis, we cannot assign it a quadrant. All we can say is, hey, it's in quadrant, uh, sorry, it's, in, uh, it's on the x-axis. And these are the answers, so you're welcome to compare them. So that's all there is to, to kind of discuss about straight lines, or sorry, uh, that's all there is to discuss about points. Let's talk about graphing straight lines now. So a couple of notes, a couple of things to keep in mind. To graph any straight line, we simply need to plot two points and connect the dots. Now, what happens if we have three points? Well, great. That doesn't mean that our line is any more accurate. All you need, need, not want, but need to graph a straight line is two points. And there's nothing special about the two points. They, they just need to be on the line. So it doesn't have to be that the line has to pass through the origin. It doesn't have to be that the line has to pass through a certain point. That None of those things are relevant. All we care about is, hey, are, teased, are these two points on this line? If yes, then great. We connect the two dots and we have our answer. So let's see how we would do this as an example. Let's say the question says to graph y equals 2x plus 3. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is that this is a linear equation. And this is the first time we're really talking about this, but this is an example of a linear function. And the reason why this is linear is because if you look at the power of the variable here and the power of the variable here, they're both 1. So what is it that makes this a linear function in two variables? Two variables hopefully is obvious, x comma y x and y are the two variables. We say that it's a linear function or a linear equation 
because the power on all the variables is one. And is it a linear equation in two variables? Sure, because there's two variables here. And I want you to, to pay special, special attention to this. I did not write this anywhere in the, in the video because I need you guys to take appropriate notes on this. So how is it that we graph them? Well, I don't know the solution to an equation that has two variables in it. If we just had something like seven equals two X plus three, that's a linear equation in one variable. And we solved those in the last section or in the last chapter. Chapter two was all about solving linear equations in one variable. So what we can do here is actually say, okay, well, I don't know what X and Y are, but we need to be able to plot points. So what we can do is say, hey, what happens if X is zero? If X is zero, can we solve this equation? And in fact, the wonderful answer is yes. If we assume X to be a particular number, then this linear equation becomes a linear equation in one variable. And those are ones we can definitely solve. So Y turns out to be two times zero. So instead of X, we're replacing it with zero. Two times zero plus three, two times zero is just zero. So that goes away. And then the plus three comes down. And then zero plus three is simply three. And then we have that if X is equal to one, so we said, okay, well, if X is zero, then Y turns out to be three. Well, what happens if X is one? I want you to pay attention again to this idea that there's nothing special about the two points I chose. So someone else could have chosen X, if X is equal to five and if X is equal to 10, that would make no difference in the world as long as we do the problem correctly. So I choose small numbers because they're easier to do calculations with, but you have the freedom to choose one and two or zero and negative five if you wanted to. So again, coming back to this question, if we say if X is one, if we were to replace this X with one, then we would get Y equals two times one plus three. And that's exactly what we have here. Two times one is two, two plus three is five. So what we say is that this line passes through, uh, remember the ordered pair has to have the X coordinate first. So the X coordinate is zero and the Y coordinate is three. So we say that it passes through this point, zero comma three. And also when we did this calculation or this computation, we got that X was one and Y was five. So it also passes through the point one comma five. Now what we can do with this information is we can plot them on an XY coordinate plane. And here, to plot zero comma three, I cannot go to the left or to the right. But what I can do is simply go up by three units. And when I do, this is my first dot. And for the second point, one comma five, I have to go one to the right on the X axis, and then up by five units. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is where my second dot is. Now all I have to do after I've drawn these two dots is simply connect the two dots with a straight line. And that is going to be the graph of this equation, y equals two x plus three. So again, did we, uh, what happens if someone had chosen, uh, you know, one and x equals two? Well, then they would have had this dot. And for x equals two, they probably would have had this dot. But if you connect those two dots, you end up getting the same exact line. What happens if someone had negative one and negative 0.5? Well, they would have gotten a point here and a point here. And if they connected those two dots, they would have gotten the same line. So again, it does not matter which two points you choose. Now, I wanted to also give you an example where you don't just have to choose values for X, you can choose values for Y as well. So let's say the question is asking us to graph two X plus three Y equals negative 12. This is a linear equation. We know that it's linear because the degrees are of all the variables are one and it's a linear equation in two variables. So two X and then three Y, the X and the Y are the two variables. And we know it's an equation because it has an equal sign in it. So linear in linear equation or linear function, both of the same. So in this particular question, we can say, well, I don't know how to solve these with two variables, but what I can do is just find a point on it. So we can assume X to be zero. 
So just like we did in the previous problem, if x is 0, 2 times 0 just goes away, because it's 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3y equals negative 12. So now what you're left with here, once you take away this 2 times 0, is a linear equation. It's still linear because the exponent is 1, but it's only in one variable. And those are, or that is an equation that we can isolate for that variable. So when we do, we can divide both sides by 3. And at this stage, negative 12 over 3 would give us negative 4. So when x is equal to 0, y turns out to be negative 4. Similarly, now here's where I could have chosen, well, let x equal 1, or x equals 2, or x equals 5. It, it doesn't really quite matter. The point that I was trying to make was, you can choose a value for x, like we did here, and you can choose another value of x, or what you can do is choose a value for y and solve for x. So here, if y turns out to be zero, or if we say, hey, let's just set y equal to zero and see what, y, uh, what x turns out to be, 2x plus three times zero, three times zero is simply zero, equals negative 12. Three times zero goes away, so we're left with 2x equals negative 12, and this hopefully you recognize is a linear equation in one variable. Those are ones where we can isolate one of the variables. So we can solve for x by dividing the two over to the other side. And negative 12 over two turns out to be negative six. So again, the two points that we found, the two coordinates are ordered, the x coordinate has to come first. So the line passes through zero comma negative four, that's this point. And then here, remember the x comes first. So the line passes through negative six comma y we had assumed to be zero. So we can say that the line passes through zero negative four and it must also pass through negative six comma zero based on what we did here. Now what we can do is plot these two points. Negative six comma zero means the function goes six to the left but not really goes up or down. And then lastly, it goes negative four down, or four down, but it doesn't go left or right. And if we were to connect these two dots, we would end up getting two x plus three y equals negative 12. The straight line between these two dots is the graph of this function. Now here is, uh, again, a very, very subtle idea. I did not write notes on it because I'm expecting you to pay attention and Think about what I'm saying and then take notes appropriately. Now, what happens if instead of choosing these two points, someone had chosen this point and this point? Wouldn't we get the same line? Hopefully you're saying yes. What happens if someone had chosen this point down here and this other point down here? They would still get the same line connecting these two points. What happens if someone chooses this point all the way to the top left and perhaps, oh, I don't know, this one, neg uh, 0, comma, negative 4? If you were to connect these two dots, you would still end up getting the same line. Now, a term that we learned in the previous section was that negative six comma zero would be a solution to this equation if it satisfied this equation. So when we were to solve this, or this equation, let's solve something very simple like this, and we get y equals negative four, this was a possible solution. We did not know that it was a solution until we took this number and plugged it in right here. Three times negative four turns out to be negative 12. So negative 12 equals negative 12 is a true statement. That meant that y equals negative four was a solution or is a solution to this equation. And we did this for when we had linear equations in one variable. Now, how is it that we know linear equations in two variables have solutions? Well, if you take the x coordinate, plug it in here, and you take the y coordinate and you plug it in here, you'll end up getting negative 12 equals negative 12. That means that this point is a solution. You could do the same exact calculation with zero comma negative four. If you were to plug those numbers in here, you would get negative 12 equals negative 12, which is a true statement and that means that this point is also a solution to this equation. So a solution basically is just something that makes this equation true. It works out, quote unquote. 
The point of this graph is that this point will also be a solution to this equation. If you could find the coordinates of this point, let's say it's negative five comma, I'm just making this up, uh, negative 0 0.7. If you were to plug those x and y coordinates in this equation and get negative 12 equals negative 12, then that means that this point will be a solution to this equation. Now let's choose something that's obviously not a solution, something like the origin, 0 comma 0. Let's plug it in. 2 times 0 is 0, so this is gone, plus 3 times 0, which is also 0, and that's gone as well. 0 plus 0 is 0 and we get 0 equals negative 12. Now that is a false statement, and what that means for us is that the origin is not a solution to this line, which hopefully makes sense because if it were a solution, this line would need to pass through the origin. It would need to go something through it. So this is very, 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 very important and fundamental to us moving forward. The graph of a function, this thing that we drew, is simply a collection of all the solutions to that function. So if you were to take this dot, it would be a solution to this function, or this equation. If you were to take this dot, it would be a solution. Excuse me, if you were to take this dot, it would be a solution. If you were to take any of these dots all the way up here, up and down this line, they would all be solutions to this equation. Now, linear equations, and this I, I should have mentioned here, so please put it in. Linear equations in two variables have an infinite number of solutions. So linear equation in one variable have three outputs or three possible answers. They could either have one solution, they could have no solution, or they could have an infinite number of solutions. Linear equations in two variables always have an infinite number of solutions. And if we were to graph all the solutions to get, they're so closely packed that the graph basically starts to look like a straight line. So what that means is if I were to start, say, uh, picking numbers, so if I were to pick this x value, I would end up getting this y value. If I were to pick this x value, I would get, end up getting this y value, so I'd put a dot there. If I were to pick this x value, I would end up getting this y value, so I'd put a dot here. Similarly, if I were to pick this x value, I would get this y value as an output, and I would put a dot here. Now what happens if, instead of having to do this by hand, we get a machine that says, hey, I, I can give you these outputs really, really quickly. So instead of having to do them far apart, and then kind of filling in the gaps in our minds, what happens if a machine allows us to do it at this x value, and then at this x value, and then this value, this value, this value, and you keep going over very, very slowly, and you keep finding solutions. Now what happens if you let a machine do everything, the graphing and the calculation? What the machine will be able to do is find these dots that are so close to each other on this x-axis. When you were to, if you were to plot them, you would get the line or you would get these collection of dots that are so close to each other that you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. So I wanted to, to indicate that this is also the same graph as this, but the solutions are far apart. Now what happens if we start packing them in closer, meaning we find the x, the y coordinate here, and we find the y coordinate there, and there, and there, and there, and we keep doing this. Eventually, if instead of finding just four uh, points, what happens if we find 10 billion of them from this x value to this x value? All of them will be so close to each other that if you were to just take a step back, it would basically look like a straight line to you. Now, if we were to connect all the dots and fill in the gaps here and fill in the gaps here and fill in the gaps here all the way here, we would essentially get the straight line. So again, the bottom line why we are allowed to connect these two dots is linear equations in two variables, please add that here, have an infinite number of solutions. So that's why if you just find two solutions, all the others have to be along the path between the two points, and then further down to the left and further up and to the right. 
So that's why in order to find the graph of a straight line, all you need is just two dots. Once you find the two dots, you can connect the line or you can connect the two dots and make the line. And that will give you all the infinite number of solutions that satisfy that equation. And that's it, I believe. Yep. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm.